Hey guys, and welcome to kind of a unique thing that I don't think you guys see that much on YouTube when you see gameplay videos. I'm about to introduce you to one of the very first games I played, if not the first game, computer game I ever played. And everyone is saying the roguelikes, and they're calling game roguelikes, where it's a, a procedurally generated map with random events and the objective is not really to defeat the game but to survive as far as possible. For me, the roguelikes is this game instead. The um, It's called Humorium and you need to have this application called Doosbox to be able to play these older games uh, on any computer nowadays. I don't think there's a computer since late 1990s that is slow enough to be able to play these games because they take up absolutely nothing and you will see why very soon. So, uh, Doosbox is just a simple program to download but when you get into Doosbox that's when you start to have to encounter a little bit of the old school stuff. There are already certain codes that are set for inputs and everything and the application is taking care of most of it, but this is what you should think of. If you find one of these games that do require Doosbox to run, put the files in a directory on your hard drive in the beginning, it, just on, on your computer. So go into this computer or my computer, select the hard drive and then create a folder there, and then put the games in individual folders underneath that because I'm going to show you the code how to um, enable Toolsbox to be able to interact with your hard drive because at the moment it's just a virtualized box sitting more or less on your desktop so it has no idea where files are or anything it has no reference so the first thing you need to do is to type the word mount because you're gonna mount up this hard drive or actually a folder to become a faked hard drive in this virtual environment most people call their hard drive or most people's hard drive R as default C. And in my case, it's actually true. So you do mount space C space C colon. And then you do the backslash. This indicates your main hard drive. And I know that there are those of you that are quite hard hardcore and you already know this, but please bear with me. So I'm getting everyone to tag along on this. I already know that I've hidden the game for well, what? hidden and put the game away in the folder called Morium. So all I need to do is type that. So mount space C space C colon backslash name of the folder and then backslash again. It's not necessarily that you have to do the last backslash but I do it because it's a sense of neatness that I have got from playing so long and being around computers for such a long time. Hit enter and you get the successful message saying that this folder has been mounted as C. Therefore you just press C colon on the command line and boom you have now entered this directory. This is technically the hard drive now. If you need to know what the files are you just press DIR so you get the directory listing and you get a quick list of all the files available. Usually it is the files that have the three digits that is the .exe that means it's an executable file, and that's what we're going to have to activate. In this case, I already know which one it is, but I did this just to show you that you can press DIR to list the files and see whether or not you have ended up in the right correction. So now all I need to do is press Umoria, and it will take care of all the codes for me. And welcome to one of the first games I ever played. This game is old and I actually think that some of you viewers have dads and moms that wasn't even born and I know you guys are extremely young but if you see this game was copyrighted in 1985 just let that sink in it's 30 years ago almost it's almost 30 years ago but what can a game from 30 years ago have to offer. Well, let's have a look. 
This is my latest character I have at the moment. I do like to play mage. And it for those of you that have come across pen and paper version of Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of role playing, you know that this is pretty much what it looks like. This is a visual representation of the pen and paper bit, but the game is looking like this. And yes, everything you see is characters from the keyboard. And it's dots, it's commas, it's small letters, it's big letters, it's numbers, and so on. Now, the objective of this game, and I have said it's a rogue-like game, which means that winning the game is not necessarily what will happen. But it is to go down in the mines of Moria, and for those of you that have seen Lord of the Rings or read the books, you know that down at the bottom of Mines of Moria is a Balrog. That is what you're going to try and defeat here. Now, it is not easy to get down to that at all, but I'm going to show a little bit of gameplay here. And for those of you that have a keyboard with a numpad, you will have it a little bit easier. There are a lot of things to actually read up on this. This is a very complex game for being so old but we're gonna see what we can find here so if I'm pressing the numbers on my keypads my character will move in a corresponding pattern so if I'm pressing 9 I'm going up and to the right up and to the right if I'm holding the down well pressing 2 I'm going down 8 up 4 left 6 to the right now, it might be feeling quite awkward to have to press the numbers all the time. Depending on what version you do set this game as, you can set the settings to be roguelike settings. Then you have a certain type of key commands that you do to move and dig and see and look. And if you do the default settings, they are a bit different. So do forgive me if you have the, the other version than the one I'm playing at. I do prefer to play on the default settings. So if I'm holding down shift and pressing 8, my character will instantly run to the end of the hallway where he discovers that there is the end of a hallway, there is a new room, he's discovering something, he's stumbling up some, onto something. And this is to save a little bit of time because otherwise you would have just sat and press, 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 press. Now, as I said, this game is also turn-based. So every time you move, your character gets a little bit more hungry He's using up uh, the torch or the lamp he's holding in his hand because we're down in the mine, we're down deep underground, so we need our own light source. Everything like this is done in the background and there's tons of calculations going on. So, sorry, if I press Shift C, all of these numbers do matter and even to this date, many games use these kind of character sheets put them out, add value, add, add references that you may not necessarily notice or experience when you do play games, but most of us understand the simple table that is the strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution and charisma. And as you can see I've already suffered a little bit of damage on the strength and constitution because I fell into a trap. And um, the, the other things, infravision, 30 feet is three squares, or three movement patterns, is the distance I can discover th things hiding in darkness. The rest, like how good am I at sneaking, so stealth fair means that I can pretty much walk in a room and monsters not really noticing or caring about me depending on their exact alignment on how evil they are. Um, you should probably play through a little bit of Neverwinter Nights. Um, and other Dungeons and Dragons games to get the concept of the um, the alignment table of uh, true neutral and true evil and neutral neutral and good and all that. But um, let, let's have a little bit of gameplay. I'm hoping to be able to show you a few things. And as I said, use a few short shortcuts and commands. Oh, here we go. That is a monster we have there. It's a slow-moving one as well, it seems. 
Looks like it's going to try and surprise me. There we go. I managed to get in because I moved slightly faster than this one. So I can press L. No. These are all keys that you will use and I did forget that I was using the other version of uh, the keyboard so study this in detail and then you will figure out what it is. Now uh, I pressed question mark to bring this page up and do pay attention because there is a difference between small letter and large letter so capitalized letter means will do a different function for you. So a small c will close a door, so you have to press C and then it will ask you which direction, and then you press that direction, and if there is a door there, it will close the door. If you pr have Shift C or Caps Lock C, you will get up your character sheet, so you get the information about strength and stamina and constitution and all that. So, we wanted to look. We wanted to be able to find out what was in a certain direction and I'm trying to find it now when I'm reading the screen I realized that I haven't really thought about this game for a while now and as you see it's 30 years old and it's still got it's still got its allure it's it's free to find and download on the internet I'm pretty certain those box is free as well but I've had it for so long so I do not know if I bought it sometimes in the past and if that was the case. I, I don't know who maintains it anymore, but you can Google for it really easy and I will actually leave all the names required in the description of this video. So, but we were looking to understand what it is. I think it's X. So yes, X. As you see on the left side, it's X and the tilde mark means that it's the button plus a direction. So, it's X and then look where we need to look, so we can get information. So press X and it asks you, look in what direction. The coin dollar symbol thing is obviously to my left, so I press it for my keyboard. I see a creeping, creeping copper coins and I can press R for recall. I will get up the information that says at least four of these creatures have been killed by contributors to your monster memory. I will go into that in detail later because this will surprise you. It is normally found at depths at around 200 feet. I'm at 250, so they should be quite common around here. It moves slowly, so you saw I was able to run a little bit faster than that. A kill of this creature is worth 2.77 points for a 13th level character, so I get 2.77 experience points if I manage to kill this one. It may carry one or two treasures. It can hit to attack and touch to poison. Obviously we would not like to be poisoned and so on. I see an open door. I see a human skeleton and it's just a skeletal remain. So I pressed enter to roll through all of that. And we now have a uh, facing off a battle against this, uh, this creeping copper coins. Now I'm a mage and I can cast missiles, I can cast uh, stinking cloud, and I can do various things. My computer is unfortunately so fast, even though I'm trying to exert it as much as possible and I've set Toolsbox to its lowest setting. So if you can find a computer that is slow enough, you will actually see that there is animations in this. So I'm gonna cast the stinking cloud, which will send away an asterisk until it hits a target, and then it will really blow up in a square, I think it's three squares sizes each direction, so it's, it has a diameter of six squares. But it will be too fast on the modern computer like this, because they didn't have this speed, they didn't even know this speed 30 years ago. <laughs> so these computers that we play on now are literally thousands of times faster than they were meant to be. But I begin as a mage, I know I keep rambling on, but this is, it's pure nostalgia for me. So I press M, I'm a mage, so for me it's mage library, and it asks me, I have A to C, 0 to 9, and you can press star for an inventory list, 
If you don't want to continue, you can press ESC or escape to abort. So you use which spell book? Well, I have three of them and I'm gonna list through here. So I press star and I get the list. Book number A is the uh, magic spells beginner's magic. Book number two is Magicka one and book number three is Magicka two. Or magic, sorry. Uh, another great game that confuses with magic there. Now, I know already where the spell is, so I press A again, and you can take your time because it's turn-based. This is basically you just whipping out your book, going to the spell page, and then casting. That's your one turn. In the meantime, when you have done your action, then the enemy will react predictably and do what they need. So, once again, if you press the star, the asterisk, so for me I'm on an English keyboard it's shift 8. I think the Americanized keyboards have the star somewhere else, but you, you know where it is on your own keyboards if you play around with keyboards enough. So we have a list here, and I've already trained all the spells in this book, it goes quite quickly if you know how to play this game, and it takes no time at all, you won't even hit level 4 before you have all the spells in the first book. And I want to play a Stinking Cloud. Now it's requirement to be level 3 to do that, I'm already way past that, I'm level 13. It will cost me 3 mana, and if I then look on my left hand side I see my list of available, uh, available stats. And in the middle section where it says Lev, Exp, Mana, MHP and CHP. Mana is obviously my mana pool. MHP and CHP stands for hit points. MHP is maximum hit points and CHP stands for current hit points. I'm fully healed so I don't need to do any healing or anything. But let's press G. So if if you looked carefully there, you saw that on the right hand side it said there was a certain chance of failure casting the spell. It's a 5% and I'm a very talented mage, so I shouldn't fail that often, but it's still a 5% chance that it fails. I succeeded. So now it's asking me what direction, and obviously it's the same as when I looked. So 4, I press, and I shot that away. If you had a slow computer, you would have seen some really fantastic for this time animation that would have enveloped the creature. Really, just as it says, the stinking cloud envelops a creature. It would have done that in the game. You would have seen it. And if you can tweak your computer down really that slow, you will see it. I guarantee, I'm, I'm not kidding. Well, it didn't die. So let's get another spell. This time from, let's say, the second spell book. So I'm pressing M to bring up the spell books. And B this time. Yet again, I get a new list. So let's acquaint ourselves with what we have here. You will start knowing these spells in no time at all. Trust me on this bit. So what can I do? Uh, well, I have a lightning bolt I can do. The, it's a frost bolt. I would say I'll do the lightning bolt because metal would obviously not be so happy with electricity. And yes, trust me, it matters. There is a difference, although you will never really get clear indication on it. When you do a the examine look, you can get hints that they are weaker to frost and stuff. I don't recall having seen that electricity is a weakness, but I know it works as a weakness in the game. So let's hit it with a lightning bolt. Press B and number four. And here we go. The lightning bolt hits the creeping coins. And then when it says more, it's kind of pausing the game because it needs to feed you more information. Press enter. The creeping copper coins dies in, dies in the scream of agony. Well, it actually didn't die. It screams in agony. So let's press M, B, B. I already know where that spell is, so I'm pressing left again. Bam. And as per description, you saw it almost looks like it exploded. The description of the creeping copper coin said that it may carry one to two treasures. Here, two treasures rolled out on the floor. It looks like it's copper coins. So I may get more money that I can be able to purchase stuff with. So it dies in a fit of agony. So let's go and grab. We found 23 gold pieces worth of silver. I never really understood that reference that they are gold pieces, but they're worth of silver. Don't worry too much about it. So 
Well, killing that guy gave me almost a hundred silver coins. Now you have the gold left, uh, lower left of the corner, and that's pretty much what gives you the indication of what your resources are. So I moved on a little bit, and you can see that there is an enemy on the map now. It's an R, it's a big R, and that should be a snake. For those of you that have played this game for a little while, you instantly start learning what the symbols are. And every single symbol on the keyboard that I know of is pretty much being used in this game. And they represent different things. Anything from walls to difference of um, uh, classes and races and everything. So, we have a large grey snake. And if we recall, well, we've killed five of these guys. Found about this depth, so 200 feet. It's a little bit erratical, and since it says just a bit, it's not moving completely erratically. It can be like it's zooming off to you and then suddenly wearing off and going somewhere else for a few turns and then charging in on you again. Well, it's worth almost twice as much as the Creeping Copper Coins was, and it's susceptible to frost. Nothing is known about this attack, because you only acquire this information if an event is happening. When you start this game out from the beginning, this monster library is completely empty and it is completely dependent upon your dis discovery. Even if you play a character and your character dies, the memories of that character is forever in the library. You can wipe the library if you delete the file in, uh, that is being created uh, in the game folder, but it is up to you. This is also where I'm going to bring in something that you may find difficult to believe. But if you have a home network, you say that your mother, your brother, your father, your sisters, um, they all have computers, this game can be played on the network. You will still be playing solo, but um, the high score list and the monster memory library will be shared. So say that you and your sisters are playing this game, but you have to go to school or you have to go to work or something. And she plays a lot of this game and you come home and you play this for the first time. Everything she's discovered, whether she died or is still just saved, is available to your memory as well. That's why it says in, in the, on the top line, at least five of these creatures have been killed by contributors to your monster memory. And it's a really fantastic thing because this is it's not technically multiplayer you can't really say it's multiplayer on that way it's not even co-op and it's a high score list you pretty much racing against whoever would play on the network and the score is evaluated on so many things between what did you learn what monsters did you kill how deep did you go how well did you manage to interact with humans and everything and i'm gonna show that soon and i know i'm I'm, I'm talking a lot and I'm trying to contain all the nostalgia I have about this game. But let's kill this snake and then I'm going to show you um, even more about this game that makes it so fantastic. So let's move on here. It was susceptible to frost, so I think that was in the second book. So yes, it's an MBH, so M for Mike, B for Bravo and H for Hotel. And that should kill this snake. Bam! So if you hit the right spells and tactics and weapons and everything, monsters aren't that troublesome. But trust me, you can... I I'm sort of safe at this level, but if I'm making a mistake, I can get killed on this level. So, the large grey snake died in a fit of agony. Alright, so let's move in here. You can see these... well left brackets and uh, right brackets. These are stairs and they go in directions. If you take a stair it will make a take you to the next level and it's never the same twice. So I'm gone from the uh, uh, top side and I've gone down and you go 50 feet per level. Sorry about that. You go 50 feet per level. So I've gone down five levels and if I go back up I will never find the same map again it will be procedurally generated and all the maps 
have they are large they're sprawling they're always built so that there is a way of getting around and everything but sometimes you might find yourself in just a room and you will have to search for a hidden door or use magic to melt the walls if they are made of mud and then try to find your way out of that room it happens every now and then but the rest of the map is there and there is always a doorway somewhere in the room if you're getting locked in you you'll figure out pretty quickly where it is as you can see here these um, apostrophes that one and this one uh, that are surrounding this one they are doors so if I press the C you see I closed and they come plus signs and it says there's closed door blocking your way if I hold, press O I open them now I can press S to quickly search and it will spend one turn searching on the spot I'm standing and you may find the door and I would expect to maybe have found the door to the left of this um, right bracket but we are not gonna go right because going right means that you're going down and the left facing bracket makes you go up so you go on to one of these and then you press the corresponding uh, character on your keyboard actually just to use them so it would be a left bracket you enter a maze of uh, upstairs cases you pass through one way door so you're pretty much stumbling in I've gone up to 200 feet now I'm not going to spend all time going all the way up here you see uh, the door was actually locked so oh, it was open it's something you will uh, stumble upon every now and then is that Something is being stubborn, a door can be locked and jammed or anything, or you're trying to dig through a wall because there is some copper or gold or diamond veins or something in there. I don't think there ever was a diamond vein, but I, I don't know. There, there are gold and copper in the walls and you spend time trying to dig unless you play, play a mage because then you can melt the wall. No, um, I'm rambling on. Um, I'm gonna try and move quickly. Um, you can walk up. And then you have to search each level for the corresponding uh, up staircase if you're gonna go up and down. Or you can go into your inventory, so you press I. You're carrying, I'm currently carrying 69.2 pounds, and this matters. The more you carry, the slower you move. But I have on row F, four scrolls of word of recall. Those of you that have played Diablo, one, two, and three know exactly what this is. But instead of opening a portal, so read, read which scroll, it charges your energy and you have to spend a few turns moving around before you get yanked up. So I want to press F. The air about me becomes charged more. You have three scrolls of word of recall. So what I do is spend time moving around and I should probably say this, you can end up in a battle and you know that this is not going well, I might actually die. Read the scroll of word of recall and if you're lucky, because it's a random amount of time, if you're lucky you may get pulled out and don't have to well, face certain death. Because this is a game where there is no save, there is no backup, there is no save point, go back. If your hit points hit zero, if current hit point hits zero, it's game over. That's it. It's done. No more. You have to create a completely new character and start over from the beginning. All your gold, everything is lost. So I'm moving around here and see if we get yanked up. And you see it takes a little bit of time. So 30 turns, I think that was. This is starting area. And the reason it's pitch black and not lit up with these... Oh, sorry, I hit the blubbering idiot. The reason it's not lit up and having these dots you see around me is because at the moment it's night time. So, these places, these things that resemble structures are indeed structures. All of these are stores and you just enter them by moving to the location. Now, this is the general store. Uh, obviously, you have all the information. You can buy stuff that you do need, which is food. Um, 
for me is also a flask of oil because I have a, a lantern rather than uh, torches because torches have less durability and the lantern can be refilled a little bit better. They just work out like that. It's quite good. Now, this game should have a rating that is just above, um, I would say, I would say this game would be fine for any kid to play. But some of the language when you interact with the merchants, because this is where you can haggle. I have not seen this in any other game since, but you can actually haggle down the prices. For real, and it's like a banter back and forth. And I'm gonna show it, because I'm gonna buy a flask of oil and see what happens here. So I'm pressing P, as the instruction says on the bottom. So I'm pressing P, and he asks, okay, so what item are you interested in? I would like to buy E, which is a flask of oil. Um, what do you offer? He's asking for five. I'm pressing one because eh, flask of oil. I don't want to pay too much for that. You try my patience. Hmm. Sell this for such pittance? Give me four gold. Hmm. More. What do you offer? One. Okay. I one gold was probably a little bit too low for that. So press two. And then now he says down knave. No less than three gold pieces. And yes, he will get more agitated the further along it gets. And you see there are some items that are a little bit more expensive. Like on row G, you have a pick, 94. Obviously, you're going to haggle a bit back and forth. So, he wasn't happy with that. Well, two golds or three golds. Well, I don't want to pay three golds. I said two. Are you deaf? No, you try my patience. My patience grow thin, grows thin. Three is final. Okay, okay then. So, it automatically says plus one, so all I need to do is press enter, or enter the value of my own, but I just press enter and boom, and then it says a pleasure to do business with you. I have a flask of oil. Now when you've done that, it's fixed, and it's fixed for the in-game's 24 hours, so it's fixed for this day cycle, so if you get back within that time limit, you will uh, you will have the, <laughs> the same price, otherwise you will start having start to have to haggle again. Now I'm gonna see if I can sell something to this guy and I have D and E and I don't want to sell either rations or flask of oil so I am not interested in that. I'm actually gonna show you what will happen if you try the patience of the merchants. So let's go for that pickaxe. I have absolutely no use for it so I would like to purchase G94. Huh. You get one gold for it. Do you wish to do business or not? What do you offer? Now, he wasn't... He didn't even bother changing his because he knew that oh, I'm not even being serious. So, let's be sort of serious. So I'm saying 15 gold then. Should be enough. And now he's commenting, hmm, nice weather we're having. And hopefully he's coming back with a counter offer. 15? You would rob my poor starving children? He dropped his by four. Now there are two ways you can do this, you can either enter each value separately or when there is something you want to buy but you want to try and reach the middle point, his lowest point, you can hit plus and then a value you want to increment with every time you add a new offer. So if I hit, say I want to increase by 7 every time on this now, so 15 plus 7 would be 22 and next time it would be 29 and after that it would be 36 and it would keep going up. So I hit enter and you see it jumped up to that. He goes, may your chicken grow lips. I want 83 gold. What do you offer? D because I did plus seven, it's stored in there now. So if I hit enter now, it will automatically give seven extra into the pot. So boom, 29. And he says, ha, no less than 75 gold pieces. And I can continue like this. Now, if I feel I move too slow, I add plus and say I want to speed this up. I change the number and I change the number up so I can do 19, do a big jump. And obviously the bigger chunk you offer, the bigger chunk he will lower with. But if you get closer to the center and you want to lower it, you just put plus and say, I only want to increase by five now. May the fleas of thousand orcs molest you. I want 70. This is where I'm saying there are a few harsh words that can be in there, but I'm th 
the game is very very safe for kids to play that they may actually learn a few creative ways of um, telling people they are less than they should be so I am going to intentionally get him to kick me out now so I will halt at 34 so I'm just pressing 34 that's an insult may your chicken girl lips I want 69 sticking with 34 ha, try again he will lower you a little bit because he's already engaged in the game and you can say that I would have been at 65 and I'm thinking no that, that's my maximum amount of gold I only have 65 but I have almost 3,000 now but say I only had 65 and I needed him to get there I can actually stop there and hope that he will lower to 265 before he kicks me out of the store you will be kicked out for 24 hours of the store well, uh, the in-game 24 hours. So no, I'm staying at 34. He doesn't hear me. 34 for such a fine item. Ha, no less than 67. 34, I don't hear you. Made the Balrog find you tasty. 66 gold pieces. 34, do you wish to do business or not? Made a fleece of a thousand orcs molest you. I want 65. You see, um, if 65 had been the goal we were aiming for, we would be fine now. Now... If you get caught in a situation like this and feel, okay, I, that's a decent price, I might get kicked out. Just enter. If I do 65, boom, I would now have bought it, but I'm not interested in buying this at all. 34. Hmm, nice weather we're having. 34 is an insult. Try 64 gold pieces. 34. Hmm, nice weather we're having. I paid more than 34 for it myself. Try 63. You have a little bit of leniency in this game, and it's because some, some stores might, you might actually buy quite a few items from. But, but my intent is trying to see how far I can go to see if I can get kicked out. And there you go. Enough! You have abused me once too often. Out of my place! So, we're kicked out. And moving around, but if I try to get back, the doors are locked. I can't get in again. That's why I checked if there was anything I could sell or needed to buy from this. The um, town is also populated by uh, NPCs, believe it or not. And they have various different things they do. This is probably, my, it was the blubbering idiot that I accidentally uh, bumped into. And he's probably a little bit angry, but he will not hit me. But he will drool over you. So, let's go into store number two and see what we find. This is the armory. And as you see here, on the lower right corner it says Cont, which means continue. So there's another page. If you press B, you can browse that page as well. Now, limitations on an old game like this exist. And in this game it is, if the store is full, if this page had been full as well, so you see A, B, C, D, all the way down to L, if it would have been full here, you can't sell because there's no room in the store inventory. So sometimes you might actually have to carry around your item because you can't sell it anywhere and you know it's worth a lot of money. But I showed you how to haggle a little bit and now I'm going to show you how to sell an item and haggle. But obviously I didn't have anything that this store wanted at all. So we're going to leave. So we press escape and we head out. Now that was something I didn't see what it was. So let's have a look. Oh. It's a filthy street urchin, and do beware of them because they can actually pickpocket you and steal some coins. You should not hit the uh, townsfolk, by the way, because they have a few battle scarred veterans and whatnot standing up in the town, and they don't engage all the time. But you might get your backside handed to you as breakfast if you anger the wrong one. Typically when you hit about level 20, you're so strong in any character that you can kill anything in one blow or accidentally do that when you just do the automatic run. But never mind. Uh, basically, stay away from them. Do not kill. Well, the townsfolk. Kill anything else. Right, so in this store I have a few things to sell. I can sell a spear and I can sell a wooden club. Now, this is the tricky thing with this game. Just like many RPG games, it has the magical items. But in this game, unless you have an affinity for it, and not even then is a guarantee, items might be magical and you may sell, 
a magic item to a store for no coins at all and they will charge you 10,000 gold coins to buy it back because it's such a fantastic item. Tough luck on your case. So when you start getting enough money it's usually good to toss an identify scroll on anything. May just get the spell a little bit later in game so they can actually identify their own items just for mana and don't have to spend time haggling buying identify scrolls to then use on items that may or may not actually be worth the value of the identify scroll. But the deeper you go the more magic you will come across. But we're gonna sell the spear here and if I'm looking on the list I see a spear is worth about 89 so obviously he wants to make a profit so he's lower than 89. So okay spear um oh no 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 so sell okay so he's offering me one and i'm thinking may the fleece of a thousand orcs molest you 89 is obviously the top bid um if i do say 100 he will just laugh at me because it's worth far too much so ridiculous not even interested I'm thinking he may be about 35 where he might start listening. As you saw, he jumped up about 10, so I might not get the optimal value for this spear. Um, as you did when you are buying something, you go from the bottom and up. When you do selling, you press minus and then what you want to lower it with. So I'm putting in a 4 and hoping I will be reaching about 20. Yeah, so now when you get close to the middle it will automatically change to not bypass so you're not d doing the that that um uh, that <laughs> silly bidding that uh, 20 is my final offer 19 okay so, so you missed that bit but don't worry about it it's a extremely well built system but let's see if i can, can't get 22 no oh, it says 21 i'm happy to acquiesce on this one so i'm just pressing truth my poor chick and children may starve, but done. I sold the spear, and luckily it wasn't magic. The plus zero, plus zero you see at the end there, they are not it. If you look at um, the last line down there, the Warhammer, the 3D3, that has plus two on, I think it's the actual hit, hit and extra damage or something. Hit or speed it might even be. Not 100% certain. All I know is that the bigger the numbers are, the better it is. So let's see if we can't sell the um, wooden club. This is not going to be worth a lot at all, but it might be magic. You never know. Seven coins for a wooden club. Six. My final offer. No. Six. Try my patient. Oh, how cheeky of him. Well, he decided he's going to have five for it, so boom. Sold a wooden, wooden club. A wooden, <laughs> a wooden club. Maximum value was 23, so... And this is where it goes in. If you have the money put the, to identify stuff, do so. Well, I sold all I can in this, so it's time to head back home. Oh, I'm starting to have a fan club. Uh, it's a blubbering idiot, weaponsmith, general store, magic shop, uh, and a filthy street urchin. Let's see if we can't do M... B, let's look at the list and do F to teleport myself. Aha, we can be left alone there and see if they can't find anything on their own. They're more than likely targeting and moving into me, but I like being a mage. You can be uh, quite a few classes. Uh, this store is more for the priest kind, and you, you do a prayer, sort of like imbuing your own weapons and everything, so you're guaranteed to hit and all kinds of crazy things. These books, the Holy Book of Prayers, Chance and Blessing, Beginner's Handbook and Words of Wisdom, can't be used by anything outside of that class. You can't read the books, you can't do anything with them. But for the right class, it means tons of stuff. So I used up a scroll of Word of Recall, but I still have enough. I'm gonna try not to let this go on for, for much longer. I'm gonna jump down again and see what we can find downstairs. So, well, this is the town. You have the, the last two stores are pretty much specialized as well. They cater to certain classes and have certain items in them. 
But let's read a scroll of word of recall. And oh, I have an unidentified scroll. We're gonna go in on that. But I'm reading F, and this is where you need to be careful. Because if you have read the scroll of word of recall and accidentally take a step down, your scroll is being reset. But if you have read a scroll, jumped up to town, it doesn't matter how long you stay up in town, how many moves, how many turns you stay up there. If you read a scroll of word of recall, you will jump down to the last depth you were at. It will be a new map, but it will be the last depth. Should be 200 feet here for us. So I have two scrolls of word of recall. And there you go. Yank downwards. Now, uh, M-A-D is a spell that makes light. M-A-D, mad. This is incidentally also the game that uh, taught me how to type on the keyboard. Because you use a lot, and depending on which class you play, uh, a mage, do M. Kind of simple in that bit. So M, and it opens up your spell list, and then you press A... R and or M A F or M A V or M A B M A C. It taught me no time at all how to be really really fast on spelling on the keyboard. Priests, uh, they use P for uh, well the, the character P to open their spell books. So anyway, we have a mob down here. So let's see him. There is Jackal. Have we fought them? Well, we've killed two of them. He's 246, so he's not worth too much. He's susceptible to frost. So let's see. Do you recall what it was? Where did where did the frost spell hide? It was M, Mike, Bravo, Hotel. Bam! And we've killed the jackal. Now, as I told you, there are identification things that may go on, and there is various way you can identify things. Wands and staffs, as you can see here. They are um, identified by use, but it's not necessarily that you can discover what they are for unless they are effective. There are ones of light, but if you're already in a lit room, you see it doing absolutely nothing. So you're not identifying what it is. There are staffs of light, but if you're already in a lit room, they do absolutely nothing. So you will not identify it. So you have to kind of figure out what it is by experimenting. Some staffs are negative, some staff are positives, and some staff do pretty much nothing at all. Um, they all have a bit of value. The same goes for wands, and um, I think it's a staff that can actually summon monsters, and do be very, very careful about them, because they will summon something from anywhere in Moria. So you might... I don't think anyone ever pulled the Balrog, but you can find some vampiric lich king from 4,000 feet down and you do that on your first level, so... <laughs> it happens, but those scrolls are typically more common the deeper you go. But the, the entire game is so completely procedurally generated and everything is indeed random. But we are going to do something here. We're going to try and figure out what the scroll titled Aetur's Bit is. By doing that, I can either do the Identify Scroll or I can decide to read it. Any class can read scrolls, by the way, so just read. So, Atrius Bit tried. It did something, but it had no effect. So, we do not know what that is. It may have been that it even does an effect, but we're not seeing any noticeable thing happening in this very room. So, oh, here it goes. I'm getting hungry, even. And you get weakness from hunger so that more hungry you are the weaker you get the weaker you get the slower you move because of what you have in your inventory but i keep rambling on so let's go eat you press shift e so you do the caps locked e the capitalized e large e Check your list if you happen to have more than one item. I usually only carry around rations of food, but if you find certain enemies, they might actually crawl all over you and slime food and everything, and you don't want to eat that. So I ate D, and I'm obviously not hungry, but let's eat some more. D. Now I'm full, and I can overeat. So if I'm eating one more time, I might actually be over full, I may be sick, I may puke out and lose, um, a random number of my 
at full miscounter. So it's not as effective. But we're moving on, trying to keep this as short as possible. I know I've been playing this for a very long time, but... To be perfectly honest, I would love to see you guys. What, 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 what was the first game you came across? And if you can, do a recording, put it up on YouTube and share it with me on my channel here. And I'll share it with everyone watching my channel. And maybe you might discover some really cool game worth playing when your favorite game at this time is down, server maintenance, what have you. So, this is pretty much it. Um, you go around, you explore. The map is always procedurally generated. If I press M, you see this is sort of the map size. Quite large. I mean, imagine this game is 30 years old. So, I'm gonna round it off here. And I hope that some of you have discovered this game and might actually enjoy playing around with it a little bit. I do hope that this recording and this resolution will be suitable for YouTube. I have absolutely no idea how this will pan out because this is definitely not 1080p HD game. Kid you not, but it, for better or worse, whatever computer you have, this can run on it. And I think the distributions is available for Linux computers and Macintoshes, Apples, and if not, if this has sparked your curiosity about roguelikes, but you don't really want to try this and you want to have the graphic UI, try the rogue games instead. Sort of the same functions, sort of the same difference, so, um, interactions, but they're all great, they're all quite addictive, and if any one of you decides to start playing this game, I would love to see any one of you that ha can get the screenshot of getting past 4,200 feet down because that is my record I had back in the days. Well, my name is Viper Bane, so please hit like, subscribe, and comment on this. And until next time, peace out.